Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We continue our examination of the Gospel of John. We're in the 14th chapter of the gospel. And this is really uh, the most intimate uh, portion of the scripture, I believe. This is where Jesus is speaking forth truth into his disciples, those who believe at whatever level they can believe. They don't have perfect faith and perfect belief, not at all. They're quite like us in that. But Jesus knows that his time uh, to be glorified has now come. He knows he's about to die. And remember what we saw in the last episode in the sixth verse of the 14th chapter, Jesus had told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then for the next several verses, Jesus is going to give them insight into the relationship uh, that he has with Father and the relationship that they will have with Jesus, with Father. And then about 10, 12 verses down, we're going to see that he's going to introduce somebody else, the Holy Spirit. He's going to show them that he's not going to leave them abandoned nor alone. So as we read through these verses, I'm going to sort of take our time here because I want us just to sort of uh, meditate upon these things, sort of dwell upon these verses to see what he says. So remember, the context is this. Jesus is telling them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way to be reconciled to Father, to the Creator of all, to the Most High God, to Yahweh, the only way to be reconciled is through Jesus Christ. Then in verse 7, he said, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So he's saying, if you had known who I was before, then you have known who the Father is. But from now on, you're going to know who I am, and you're going to know him because you have seen me. He's talking about what they've seen in him in the past. He's talking about what they see in him in the present and what they're about to see when he is killed, when he's buried for three days and three nights, and when he rises from the dead. Well, they don't quite understand all this yet. Verse 8, Philip said to the Lord, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. (laughs) And Jesus says to him in verse 9, Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus had already gotten in trouble, you know, several times with the religious rulers because they knew what he was saying, that he was equating himself with being equal with God, the Father. And so now he's saying, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he's going to keep driving this home the way he eventually says, I and the Father are one. Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? So he asked him that as a question. Do you not believe this? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? You know, and I think if we're honest with one another, we would understand uh, the struggle that they have with believing what he's saying right here. You know, even we on this side of Calvary, on this side of the cross, with the totality of the revelation of the Scripture, with the Holy Spirit to get insight and illumination and, and revelation to us and enlightenment to us, Even with all that, we can read these passages and still say, well, God, how? You know, we we still can have that. So how much more so then? So again, he says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Jesus says, the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. So he's been revealing this to them and showing them this, that he's not just saying things. He's saying what the Father is saying. And by doing that, he's doing the works of the Father who dwells in me. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Jesus had challenged people to do that before. You know, sort of the idea that, yeah, I understand you may have a hard time believing by the words, but at least believe by the works. Believe by what you see happening, these great signs, these great wonders, these great miracles. 
So again, Jesus is saying, believe in me. Why? I am the Father. The Father is in me, and the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then verse 12, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now, uh, I, I'm just going to stop right here as far as the scripture today, and I just want to take a moment for us just to think on that and reflect on what he's just saying. He's saying, believe me. Believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me. Or, you know, just believe on account of the works themselves. In other words, I understand you may not believe all of this and understand it all yet, but you will. Okay? You will as time goes along. But then he says this, whoever believes in me, will also do the works that I do. Well, what's the context? The works that he is talking about right here and the works that he's done is that he says, I'm not speaking on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Does his works. He's speaking forth the word of the Father. That's the context right here. He's speaking forth the words of the Father. And he says, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. Now, is it just limited to speaking forth the works of the Father? No, I think it's all that Jesus had done. And even greater works? Is there a greater work than raising somebody from the dead, for instance? Or is there a greater work than speaking forth the truth of the kingdom as someone believes and their life is transformed? How can there be greater works than those? Well, I think what Jesus is speaking of right here is just the sheer number of them, okay? Because Jesus lived in the timeline of a corporal existence. The time that he was doing these works is some three and a half years, and it's one individual doing these works over some three and a half years over a spread, let's say, geographically 200 miles. And what he's saying is that my followers, those who believe, will go out and do innumerably more of these kind of works than I've done, okay? Just the sheer number of them. But the operative phrase is, whoever believes in me, believes in me will do these works. It's going to be pretty rare for somebody to not believe, for instance, that Jesus can heal and yet them heal somebody. It does happen sometimes, okay? The Lord glorifies himself by using somebody who doesn't really uh, believe that God does something like that to heal somebody like that, okay? I, it's sort of cool how God will do that. So he's not limited by our faith, and he's not limited by our lack of faith. But he's saying this, believe in me and the works that I have done here, greater works will you do. Why will we do greater works? He says, because I'm going to the Father. What? His leaving and going to the Father will enable us to do Greater works? Well, how's that? Well, we'll see in the next few verses because he tells us point blank, but I'll just give you a little hint, which we've already talked about a little bit. It's because he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Okay, He's going to send the Holy Spirit, and that's going to enable his body to do the works that he did and even greater works. <clears throat> well, anyway, my time's up. Uh, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, this is literally the 499th episode we've done together. Can you believe that? So uh, I do ask you to uh, pass the word to your friends and the people and just uh, tell them about this time together get them to join us also if you feel the Lord is encouraging you to help support this uh, just go to my website it's just dalemore.tv and at the top of the page right there you'll see a little link called a Patreon link just click that and it's self-explanatory you can see what's going on there anyway thank you for your faithfulness and I'll see you again next time